So are there any questions to begin with? Talking about the Lawrence Group and its representations, and um, what we learned was that was the infinitesimal four by four generators are these linear combinations, theta dot r plus lambda dot b, where there are three vectors, three four by four matrices r, which are like the uh, rotation matrices, but they're the four by four versions of the rotation matrices. And then there are these boost matrices, and so the Lorentz transformation, the 4 by 4 one, that seems close to the identity is I minus I. And when we write it in physics notation, we do this sum over L minus I lambda J I B J. And we then rewrite that as I minus I theta uh, L. JL minus I lambda J KJ. And the J's are um, permission and the uh, K's are not. And we have the commutation relations JI, J, J is I. Epsilon I, J, K, J, K. So those are the ordinary angular momentum of the commutation relations. Then J, I with K, J is I, Epsilon I, J, K, K, K. And then there's the weird one, K, I, K, J is um, minus I, Epsilon I, J, K, uh, J, K. And um, as I say, I don't, I don't know how to illustrate that. Um, okay, and under this, under the Lorentz transformation, if we have a um, a four vector turns into t prime is t plus lambda dot x, and x prime is x. So x is a three vector plus t lambda vector um, plus theta vector cross x vector. So that's how a, a, a four vector, in other words, t, it's txl is t prime x prime where x and x prime are three vectors. So these, this is a four vector equation. L is a four by four matrix. This is the four by four matrix L. Okay, and so this is the, if, if, if this is all we, we knew, we'd be really hard pressed to find re, um, representations of the Lorentz group, but I don't know who it was who figured this out. It, I know Wigner used it because um, he wrote the basic papers on representations of the Lorentz group, and he must have known what I'm about to write down and what we talked about last time, namely that if we the K's are anti-Hermitian. We multiply them by i, they become Hermitian, and now we've got these Hermitian generators, these Hermitian matrices or generators, and they satisfy the rules j i plus j j plus is i epsilon i j k j k plus, 
And in fact, I could write it this way, minus, 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 meaning that um, the J minuses also obey the commutation relations of, so in other words, J plus and J minus R, or let us say, obey the commutation uh, relations of the rotation group. They what the average is. Excuse me? What? Why do you put the flat three back to arrows in? J I, J J, J K. I and J and K run from one to three, so these are vectors. I thought they were, it's four. A, I thought they were like four. The four by four, if, if we're speaking in terms of these guys here that are four by four matrices, yes, they're four by four matrices, but there are three of them that we call J plus and three that we call J minus. When you write J plus three vector, you mean a set of three matrices which are all four by four. Yes. Yeah. And let's see, the person handling the camera always gets a uh, And is there anybody who would rather have carrots? If so, you can throw them a carrot. Do you want a carrot? No. You guys are probably still young enough to handle sugar. I don't know. If those don't know, right? I tend to avoid it. And then we have, and the marvelous thing is that these guys are independent. They commute. And so what one can do is um, we want to make representations now of this Lie algebra and of these Lie, this Lie group. And so we want to find matrices that obey these commutation relations. Well, if we were over here, we'd be really, it would be hard for us to do this. But when we come over here, we see it's trivial. We've already done this in quantum mechanics class because we know that um, for any spin j equal to 0, 1 half, 1, 3 halves, whatever, there are 3, 2j plus 1, by 2j plus 1 square matrices, which we call j. And um, these uh, are these are the matrices we use to represent angular momentum in uh, quantum mechanics uh, classes, and they would, and they are the same as the, the, so we can use them to represent these J plus and J minus, it's just that we need two of them. And, um, and so in order to have two, what we do is we say, um, Let's take one J that's associated with, with, with the, the number J, and then another one, J, associated with J prime. And um, I could call this one J plus and this one J minus. Okay. And so this then would be three matrices. They're 2j plus 1 by 2j plus 1. And these are three other matrices. that are 2j prime plus 1 by times 2j prime plus 1 dimensional matrices. Um, and uh, and, uh, and so we can have representations. We'll use the three J's to represent the J pluses and the three J, uh, J minuses of size 2J prime plus one to represent the J minuses. 
and we'll call the representation djj prime and the parameters that we've been using we might as well continue to use them they're the ones for the exponential parameterization theta and lambda and that would be e to the minus i theta lambda j lambda minus i lambda I said lambda, it's L. Lambda L, KL. So those are the things we want to represent. But we know that these J plus or minus are these linear combinations. And consequently, when, and consequently we can we know that the J's are J plus plus J minus and the K's are minus i j plus plus i j minus. So we can get back to these anti-hermitian k's this way, and we get to the j's that way. And so we just substitute. And what does this give us? This gives, what does this give us? This gives us e, and now jl is going to be um, so let me do this in two steps. Theta L, and this JL will be J plus L plus J minus L minus I lambda L, and these KLs are going to be minus, minus I J plus L plus i j minus l. But now the marvelous thing is the j pluses and the j minuses commute. And so we can rewrite this as e. My left hand was down when I wrote that, so you want to look at it carefully. This is minus i theta l. minus lambda L, J L plus, plus minus I theta L, plus lambda L, J L minus. On the other hand, the J pluses and the J minuses commute, and so we can rewrite this as E to the minus I theta L, minus lambda L, JL plus E to the minus I theta L plus lambda L JL minus. And um, so we can say then that this D J, J prime of theta and L, these being vectors, is the product of a dj of theta and lambda times a dj prime of theta and lambda. And this product is in this product, in this pro we've got this product representation, which is variously called a direct product representation or a tensor product representation. Um, I've never quite understood which is the preferred name for that, if anybody knows what the, what the clerics prescribe, let me know and I'll adopt it. Yes? Can you just explain what he's saying that's at the top left of this right hand board here? About the... Give me that again now. Why? He's chosen the, the J matrix that corresponds to J and J prime. J, little j is either, little j and little j prime are either 0, 1 half, 1, 3 halves, pick one of those. Which gives you three sets of matrices which are 2j plus 1 by 2j plus 1. Right, and then another three that are 2j prime plus 1 by 2j prime plus 1. And they're the normal ones. They're the normal ones from ordinary non-relativistic quantum mechanics. So how, how I think this was... Before, but I, I can't 
how can you have commutation relations between them? So if you pick those, the J plus and the J minus commute with each other, even though they're different sizes. Well, all the better because they're different sizes. In other words, here's what we're trying to represent. The J pluses with the J pluses give you J pluses, J minuses with J minuses give you J minuses, but J pluses with J minuses, zero. That's the algebra we're trying to represent. And so we do it by fiat. We say these three J pluses satisfy among themselves the angular momentum commutation relations. The three J minuses among themselves satisfy the angular momentum commutation relations. But the one with the other, Just the two matrices of different sizes. I don't know how that works. Right, but um, in other words, our rules for handling them are that they just go right through each other. Okay. Or to put it differently, the field that we'll be talking about here. Yeah. Let, let me, let me skip ahead to an equation that bang, doesn't exist. Um, uh, so let me, let me basically uh, invent it. Oh, 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 let, me, let me wing it. All right, here's what we'll be shooting for. U is now a unitary transformation that implements a Lorentz transformation L. Lorentz transformation L being, say, this L of theta and lambda. Right. Now, it's going to be acting on a field psi, and I would say psi sub m, m prime, psi j, j prime, okay, of um, x, U inverse of L, and what is this going to be? This is going to be D J J prime, and it turns out, curiously, that it's going to be of L inverse. That's neither here nor there. This is going to be psi J J prime of L X, where this is the four vector and this is a four by four matrix, and now. Uh, uh, let me call this M plus and M minus. That's what we what we were going to want to have happen. Okay, for a general field, this is the way it transforms. And in other words, th this is the direct product representation. Okay, or better yet, let's 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 write what that will actually be. I can erase this by now, right? Because you guys have had plenty of time. Anyway, it's on video and it's in the te it's in the online notes. Except in the online notes. I skipped, I skipped this equation, this one in the middle, it just didn't fit. So, in other words, what this really is, is then dj of L inverse m plus, m plus prime, dj prime, M minus M minus prime on psi M prime plus M prime minus of Lx and JJ prime. Okay? Now, unfortunately, this isn't in the notes. But 
But that's what's going on. Right. Now, when I've written it this way, it's clear to you, isn't it, I think? <sighs> right. It, well, this is, all right, this is hard. In fact, this, I don't know, I maybe should, shouldn't be doing things that are this difficult. So, let's have more questions. Yes. So, I mean, I guess you, are you going to eat your... Um, I, I eat the first one, but generally not the later ones. Um, so, I mean, it, it kind of relates to his question, but generally you say L is a 4 by 4 matrix, right? Yes. So... That's the ordinary Lorentz transformation. Uh, so, I mean... Your JLs and your KJs, which form your J plus. And I'm J. sorry, say that again? Your JLs and your JK, or K, your JLs and your KJs, um, which form the J plus and minus. I mean, those all should be 4 by 4 matrices, too. Yeah, over on this board, we can imagine that everything is 4 by 4. Okay. And then, then, as usual, these are matrices in the Lie algebra of the group, in this case it's a non-compact Lorentz group, so the question is how do we represent these matrices in general? And in general what we do is we go back to non-relativistic quantum mechanics and grab six matrices from uh, some book on rotations and then do this with them. And this is the direct product representation. This thing is sometimes called a super matrix because the way, because this vector has two indices. And it's funny, I've heard people talk about the direct product this way, but I haven't, I don't recall ever seeing it done with three matrices over here. I don't see why you can. Well, I've never seen it. So, um, yeah. So what are these things, X? Um, so you have a product space of states. So one of these J plus acts on one factor of that product space, and the other acts on the other factor. So you can, is that, is that correct? Well, wait, wait a second. These J pluses and J minus, these J's, these D's, mm -hmm. these J's are used to make the D's. Right. The D's are just things that, that is how the fields transform. Right, but each one the acts. States, now the states, the quantum mechanical or quantum field theoretic states, are acted on by the U, by the operators, the U and by psi. Hmm. So is there some sort of are these this fields on the product? No, it's no, okay. Um, are these fields on some kind of product space? Say that again. So where is the product space that you're talking about? The product representation. It's the. It's that we're representing. That this matrix here. Is a direct product of these matrices. Hmm. So do each J plus and J minus. Are these on a different subspace of that product space? Well, it's like it's like this. All right, let, let, let's. All right, you're, these are good questions. Let me let me give you an example. The simplest example is when J and J prime are zero. We're talking about a scalar field, and both D's are one. They're one by one matrices. Next simplest, which we're going to do in detail is if one of the j's is a half and the other one is zero. This is for a spin one-half field. The next simplest case is one j is a half and the other j is also a half. So then we have a direct product of two two-by-two two matrices. And we're talking about a field that transforms as the direct product of two two-by-two two matrices, which is to say two matrices that represent spin one half. This field then 
is a field that, after all, if you multiply member in quantum mechanics, if you have angular momentum one half and angular momentum one half in the same system, what you really have is angular momentum one and angular momentum zero. So this direct product get, can be rewritten. This is a reducible representation. And you can reduce it to an irreducible three by three vector field and a, an irreducible one by one scalar field. Is that somehow so that's what happens. Is that somehow related to the fact that the Lorentz group has a vector and a scalar? Oh, it probably is related in some way, uh, but um, it would be like one of those taxi rides that you get if you're a foreigner in a country and the taxi driver is cheating you. Uh, remind me to say something about taxis and sto uh, when story time occurs. All right, so let's let's get on to these examples then. It's funny the, the this equation, although I said it didn't exist, it was one of the next equations, except that I didn't add this part, and I really should. Um, all right, so basically then with these representations, um, the, 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 the compact part is represented by J, the non-compact part by K. And now if we're putting together J plus and J minus, then the spin S that can be represented, the spin of the field, call it spin. I don't know why we call it spin. Nobody knows what spin is as far as I can tell. Um, this goes from J minus J prime to J minus J prime plus one dot 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 up to J plus J prime. Those are just the angular momentum rules when you put together two representations of the rotation group. And notice that if you interchange J plus and J minus, J doesn't change, but K changes sign. And um, that's something that we can see is OK, because if you flip the sign of K, that's like leaving the first equation unchanged, multiplying the second equation by minus 1, and then the ch sign change cancels on the left-hand side of the third equation. So if you have J and K representing, uh, you have matrices representing J and K, you can also have matrices representing J and, you can also use the matrices J and minus K. All right, so now let's go to the first non-trivial case. And in my notes, I unfortunately did the left-handed one first. And it turns out that the left-handed one is more confusing than the right-handed one. So I'm going to try to do it backwards from the notes. But in the notes, I did left-handed first. Why did I do left-handed first? Well, the fields of the standard model are conventionally thought of as left-handed. So let me... Um, Right-handed case, we said curiously, we said dj equals. That's why I did left first because, at least in Weinberg's notation, it's this way. This is the right-handed one. J equals zero. J prime equals one half. And so, this is the the representation then. And um, we have J is equal to, well, J, well, what is J plus? J plus is sigma over 2 
what is J minus? J minus is just zero. Okay. And so what is J? J is one half sigma, and K is I sigma over two. That's from these relations here. Okay, these two relations. You just said J minus equal to zero and J plus equal to sigma over two. Sigma over two is our is the first uh, the Pauli matrices. Does anybody want me to write down what the Pauli matrices are, the two micro matrices? That's almost the only thing I ever memorized. Um, Sometimes when I'm, one of my sons is at home and I try to talk to the son. They have three different names, of course. And I sometimes run through all three names before I get the right one. Of course, I know who they are. <laughs> I'm just terrible with names. Um, I don't know why. Okay, so what is the, um, how are we representing this Lorentz transformation? Well, L is, we're going to represent it as e to the minus i, theta L, J L, minus i, lambda J, K J. And so this D, 0, 1 half of theta and lambda then is going to be e to the minus i, theta dot sigma over 2, that's J. And then it's going to be a minus i times i is just plus 1. So it's plus lambda dot sigma uh, over 2. And um, it'll turn out that this is d 1 half 0 of um, theta and minus lambda. So theta and lambda are three vectors here. Sigma is a three vector of matrices. Okay. So these are the two standard ways. This is the right-handed. Uh, right-handed spinners. And this is the left-handed. What is the standard um, boost? What is what is the matrix L? Let's let's now go back to the Lorentz group, the four by four matrices that we're representing over there as two by two matrices. Um, what is the standard? What, what is the standard boost? The standard boost is B P. And this is going to be an R of P hat. B3 of P0 and R inverse of P hat. And this is a 3. Okay. Now what is this B3 of P0? B3 of P0 
is the one that takes the three vector, four vector, into the four vector P0. Okay, so that's the thing that we're looking at. And so what is the four by four Lorentz transformation that does this? What's M? Huh? What's M? What is M? M. M is the mass of the particle. Okay. So the particle at rest is represented by the four vector M zero zero zero. And the four the particle in motion, or the particle at rest viewed from a different Lorentz frame, has energy P0, 0, 0, 0, P3 because for simplicity we're just looking at the things in the motion in the z direction, which by federal law is off. Okay, now I actually, oh God, I worked this out and I may have printed it, hold on. Worked this out in detail and even teched it, and damn it, I don't have uh, I don't have it with me. So I'm going to have to um, wing this thing. What is B three? Uh, well, B three is going to be. I wrote it as. Um, E to the alpha or well, this 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 boost matrix here is going to be E to the it's this thing here is going to be E to the alpha B3. And what is that? That's E to the alpha times zero 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 one. Zero 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 one. And so this is a sum alpha of the n over n factorial b three to the n. Now, what is so this is the matrix b three. My notation is a little bit screwy here. Um, so I'm using B3 for two different things. Um, I once, when I was, I guess, a self form, I took a course in abstract algebra. And um, on a, an exam, I used the letter A for three different things to prove something. <laughs> so I explained to the professor. I actually had in mind consistently these three different, these A's standing for three very different things, and the proof worked. Right. He still marked it wrong. <laughs> he was a hard young man from Scotland. It was actually a terrible teacher. I hope he's not watching. He, he, here's the way he wrote he would write on the board like this. And he had the eraser going in the left hand. <laughs> so, unless, but he wasn't thin enough to be transparent. So, um, it was just terrible to um, figure out what he was writing. Um, we just would get glimpses of it. All right, now, B3 is this thing. This notation, B3 of P0, is this boost in the three direction that takes uh, mass M to energy uh, P0. Okay, so I'm sorry that the notation is 
is unfortunate. B3 squared is just 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So it's like the identity. So when we sum this thing, this is the sum of the even ones And B3, 2N is just B3 squared plus the odd ones. And if you take B3, 2N plus 1, this is just B3. And so, if you let me rewrite this, I'll just replace 2n plus 1 by b3. So that means that this thing, this sum is cosh. So this is cosh alpha times b3 squared plus cinch alpha times b3. In other words, this boost matrix e to the alpha b3 is equal to cosh alpha 1, 1, cosh alpha 0, 0, 0, 0, cinch alpha, cinch alpha 0, 0, So that's what the matrix is. And these two ones come from the term where n equals 0, the n equals 0 term here. So when I say here, this is b squared, actually that's a mistake, isn't it? It's Uh, it's probably in other words for n equals 0 it's not b3 squared it's the identity um, and so this thing is really um, it's probably this minus 1 no, that's not right either well in any event this is right you can see as you go to alpha equals 0 the cinches vanish and you just get 1 1 1 1 and um, uh, you know, I'm just wondering, let me just flip back here. Had it, yeah. Cosh alpha minus one, plus the identity for the, but without, yeah. You're saying cosh alpha minus one times b three squared, and then just add which the makes sense because that's right. That part is right. And then what do I put over here? Just the identity. Huh? Just the identity. Yeah. That way, when then yeah, when alpha equals zero, it works. Okay, good. All right, so if somebody gets a candy, who wants a candy here? Do you want another candy? I'll eat. But you should ask a question. So I have a question. Oh, uh, good. <laughs> what's a 
What's the relationship between P0 and alpha? Ah, we're about to get the relationship between P0 and alpha. So brilliant, brilliant timing. Um, we learn it from this. Because what we want is that M000 on this be M000. And we want this to be P000 P3. But what does that tell us? That says that M cosh alpha is P0. And um, that M cinch alpha is P3. So this is the relation between alpha and P. Okay. So now that we've got the relation between alpha and p for the 4 by 4 for the Lorentz group, which is to say the defining representation of the Lorentz group, which is the 4 by 4 representation. We can now We can now say, well, what is d one uh, d zero one half? So let me go back to the right-handed one. So we're going to represent this as d zero one half of zero alpha p half, in other words, what we've done is we've set theta equal to zero and uh, lambda equal to alpha p hat. And so this is going to be e to the alpha p hat dot sigma over 2, because remember that this d 0, 1 half just has an, it's just basically e to the lambda sigma over 2 if we're just doing the boost. And so this is something that boosts the particle to, uh, anyway. So what is this? Well, if you expand this, what you find is I cosh alpha over 2 plus p hat dot sigma cinch alpha over 2, which is to say I and now this is cosh alpha over 2, whereas cosh alpha, alpha is defined by these relations. There's some relations between cosh and cinch and so forth. This turns out to be P0 plus M over 2M plus P hat dot sigma P0 minus M over 2M. And when you can rewrite this as P0 plus M plus P, oh, there's a typo for you. Yeah, that must be a typo. This must be P dot sigma over the square root of 2M P0 plus M. So this is that's what that is. In other words, that two by two boost representation is going to be this. And I've suppressed the identity. It's a two by two identity matrix that I've suppressed. This I is a two by two identity matrix. What's P P half slide? Huh? P half. P hat is just a unit vector in the P direction. A unit three vector. Huh? A unit three vector. Yes. And now, um,
Okay, now it turns out that under this um, more, more general, uh, this is for theta equals zero. If we put theta in, then what we, what we, um, what one can show is that d dagger zero one half of theta lambda i d zero one half. And that means, by that I mean this thing here. That that is equal to, and this is theta lambda. This is equal to i plus lambda dot sigma. And the d dagger of 0, 1 half of theta and lambda on sigma this is equal to sigma plus the 2 by 2 identity times lambda plus theta cross sigma okay so um one can show that I'm I I assigned this as an exercise in these notes. And um, now this is how these four by four, this is how the vector Tx transforms for infinitesimal uh, T and for infinitesimal Lorentz transformations. Um, what we had was T prime is t plus lambda dot x, and x prime was um, x plus uh, lambda times t plus um, theta cross uh, x. So for an infinitesimal Lorentz transformation, theta lambda, t and x transform this way, and so uh, and we call them a four vector. Well, under this two by two representation, the analogous four vector is a four vector of two by two matrices. The identity and and the three Pauli matrices are playing the role of t and x. And as I say, it's a little work to show this, but it's, it's not an incapacitating amount of work. All right. Then what you have is the following. For this 2 by 2 if we have a field that transforms as d 0, 1 half of L inverse or let us say this is how we will require a spin one half field to transform U of L zeta this is a two component field U inverse of L is this D of zero one half of L inverse on zeta of Lx now why why do we want this thing to be like this? Um, well, because if we do have it transformed this way, then we can have a certain action that's Lorentz invariant. So let me show you what the action is. In fact, I think maybe it's story time. So before I do this, I think it's good to give you a, a bit of a rest. Um, all right, I, I was going to look up some great quotes by Stevenson, but I forgot. Or uh, what, uh, so I'll tell you just some, um, 
some things that are just sort of random. One is that uh, one friend of mine in the department, Gary Hurling, um, went to Colorado last week, went to some political event, shook hands with Bill Clinton. So um, I shook hands with uh, <coughs> Gary, so I'm shaking a hand with shaking Bill Clinton's hand. Um, my son actually shaked Obama, my youngest son shaked Obama's hand when he was back in the parade. Um, when he was visiting you in Obama. Um, so let's see, what were the uh, stories I was going to tell you on? Something about taxis. A taxi? Did you say taxi? Yeah, all right. Well, okay, uh, this is what happens in, in China at airports, probably at train stations. Um, and so this is good information for you if you visit China. You get out of the, you, you get off the plane and you, in some airport, and in fact the airport in Shanghai is extremely modern and also in Beijing, and um, so are the subways. Um, anyway, so you're, you're there with your bags and you, you, if you follow the signs of the taxi line, you find that the line is probably 300 people long. And so you have the choice of, and so you, you get on that line, within seconds, some guy will come up to you and say, I can get you a taxi ride, where do you want to go? And then you'll say where you want to go, and then the person will say, I can get you there for 300 yuan. And in fact, the actual standard taxi fare is maybe 100 yuan. So in other words, he'll, he'll let you cut the line if you pay him two or three or four times, depending on how much he gouges the price. If you stand in line, it isn't that long, it turns out, because the people don't cut in, they obey the rules, and there are, there are people who are supervising the movement of people into taxis and the resilience of taxis showing up, and uh, it's extremely efficient. And so even though you're in line with 300 people ahead of you, five or 10 minutes go by and you're in a taxi. Um, well, unfortunately, most of these taxis, in the back seat, the seat belts are hidden, and um, you have to be very clever to get the seat belt out and on in time. I never succeeded. Um, most of the drivers were sensible, but um, I once had a driver who was essentially a kamikaze driver, and uh, I was scared to death. And we had told him we had plenty of time, we didn't need to rush, but I drove like mad because I guess he wanted to get two fares in the same length of time. Okay, so I'll tell you uh, something else that's actually more amusing. Well, much doesn't have to be very amusing, but more amusing than a taxi story. But what I told you probably is useless. Just get in the line. And try. Um, I heard this today. The, um, and in fact, there's a website. If you Google Declaration of Dependence Space Onion, you come to a very funny column from the Onion Human Humor magazine or website. And it's this marvelous um, Dr. Toto of various of our chief politicians, and, uh, including Obama and uh, the head of the Senate, uh, the two heads of the Senate, basically, and our majority and minority leaders of the Senate, and same thing for the House, and Joe Biden. Obama sitting down, and I think the president, of Ch the premier, is it the president or premier of China? The top person in China is he the chairman. president? Chairman. Chairman. Yeah. All right. Chairman there, and and uh, it's it's labeled as a formal declaration of dependence upon China. And, uh, 
It's very well done. The, the photo is marvelous. So it's called Doctor. Um, the, uh, the text, I didn't have time to read the text, but it's probably amusing. So um, I, I recommend The Onion to you. It's, it's, it's a good source of humor. I don't know, is it British or American? Anyway, go, go, go check out The Onion. Um, okay, so how does this work? Well, it, you know what I'd like to do is I, I think for the, in order to make everything so, so I don't have to wing it, let me do the left-handed case. In the left-handed case, what we have is that now the four vector is I, is minus i and sigma corresponds or transforms like t and sigma t and x. Or what, what makes, or equivalently, since these are linear transformations, it's i and minus sigma transforms like t and x. Okay, so now if I call this vector s a, and I mean then the four vector um, i and minus sigma, or I, as I wrote it in this these notes for some of I had fewer minus signs if I called it minus i and sigma, so let's call it minus i and sigma. Then um, what you can show, analogous to what I showed over, well, I didn't show, I asserted this over here. You can show, but I'm just going to assert because it's late. Um, D dagger of 1 half 0 of L, L being a Lorentz transformation, S A D, now we're doing left handed, 0, 1 half of L, is L A B S B. In the case of right handed, it's plus I. In fact, I probably could wing it, but let me, let me not try to wing it because this will be my leftover minus sign for sure. So it's U of L. Here's how a left-handed spinner transforms. So C is the two-component spinner. U is the unitary transformation represented Lorentz transformation. U, C, U inverse is this two-by-two two matrix acting on this two-component spinner but we've gone from x to l of x, where l is the 4 by 4 Lorentz matrix. And I'm using l here in, um, previously I was using theta and lambda, so there's a given theta and a given lambda that represents l. Okay, what is the um, action density? The action density here for the left-handed spinner is I C dagger of X D0 time derivative 2 by 2 identity minus grad dot sigma C of X. Okay. Now what we want to show is the U inverse of L L sub L of X u of l is equal to l sub l of lx. This is, in the jargon of the trade, it said that the action density is Lorentz covariant. So it transforms as a scalar. Under the unitary transformation, it turns into l sub l of lx. All right, now why does this work? Well, first of all, Notice that we're going to LX. So if we go to LX, we're going to have these derivatives, our derivatives with respect to X prime equal to L of X rather than X. So we'll be talking about X prime is LX and X is L inverse of X prime. 
Uh, so in particular, XA is L inverse AB X prime B. Okay. So the derivative with respect to X prime B by the chain rule, of course, is the derivative with respect to X of, of XA with respect to X prime B times the derivative with respect to XA. But this thing from there is equal to L inverse AB partial partial XA. All right. So, so that's, so we want to see this, that under this Lorentz transformation that this, this structure shows up in the uh, action density. So since I've used up all that space, let me go over here. That the top line, x uh, a equals l inverse a. Is that all right? Wait, wait a second, I, I, All right, where where who's answering the asking the jury? No, the top line. What it, what does it say? X prime uh, a is just a uh, yeah, and zero is, three. Oh, the next the, the equal sign l inverse of a b. X prime is l of x. X a is l inverse. L is a 4 by 4 matrix, L inverse is another 4 by 4 matrix, the 4 by 4 matrix L inverse is AB. Okay. Now, let me tell you something about the notation. When you mix up, in normal matrix multiplication, the first index is the row index, the second index is the column index. But in the case of special and general relativity, we distinguish between upper and lower indices. These two, these two notations commute. They're independent. So the one on the left is the row index, whether it's up or down. The one on the right is the column index, whether it's up or down. And so this is a matrix, a four by four matrix L inverse. This is a four by four by four matrix L. And, um, there's such that L say A B L inverse B C is delta A C. That's how we write the thing. All right. Okay. So now, what happens then to this action density U L? And let me write the action density out. It's I C dagger of X P zero I minus delta sigma C of X the inverse of L. Okay, well this if we rewrite it, it's U of L or I U of L C dagger of X. This U inverse comes. Well, we can we can stick a U U inverse here. Or U inverse U. here that I stuck in is UU inverse. I really want to move him through. This is a unitary operator. It commutes with derivatives and matrices. So I can move it through to there. And then we have the way the field transforms. And so this is equal to 
I C dagger of LX D one half zero adjoint of L inverse. And this thing here, I'm going to write as minus DASA, and then this structure, U, C, U inverse, is D one half zero of L inverse C of LX. And now we said, we saw how this transformed. This, this transforms in such a way as to give us uh, I think there's a prime off here in these notes. Um, let me first get my good glasses. simply is the spin zero field and the only spin zero particle that's been discovered in quotes is the Higgs and or a Higgs-like particle and um, at least a fundamental particle. There's, there, are, there are mesons that are spin zero but they're unstable. Um, 
so the, the formalism for spin one half field is a little bit tricky. I mean, it's what I've done today. If, if you find it puzzling, don't feel bad. I also find it puzzling. Um, but I thought it's worth showing you. And if you, if you look at the notes, I think you can work through them and fill in all the text. Um, and then the other fields that are important are these gauge fields, the electrodynamics and the weak and the strong interactions. That's complicated. And then the spin two fields, the gravitation, and that's also more complicated. So it's, everything is sort of backwards. I don't know why. All right, like, you can stop now.